Got it. Oh, got it. Got it. Um, good evening, everybody. It's so great to see all of you, even though it's virtually. But I love it. I love the the grid view. It's the Brady Bunch style. It's it's really wonderful, and I'm so pleased that you chose to attend this evening. We have 60, 60 participants, including uh, and then me. So I'm I'm very thrilled to see you. I know that um, we're gonna we're gonna run through a bunch of topics tonight. Um, as David said, if you have a question, and I think you know if it's relevant to the topic that we're on, we'll take those questions and and try to answer them. Um, to the best of our ability. And then we will, uh, if there's other topics that people want to talk about, we can do that at the end. Um, but we have a couple of things that we want to discuss. And again, I, this is, you'll be hearing from me a couple of times tonight. And the first time is really just a welcoming and to lay out what, uh, how the meeting will go. So Rabbi Abe will do the Devar Torah. I'll give a, a report on what's going on at the shul and uh, Abe will update us on the high holidays. Um, we'll also have a report of the nominating committee, which is probably the, the biggest reason you're all here. Greg Cantor and Rob Byron will present a slate of candidates and you'll have an opportunity to vote. Gary Bramnick will talk to us about the development and fundraising and Brian Boucher will talk about the, the budget and you'll have an opportunity to ask questions about that. And then you'll hear from me again, just when you're tired of me. Um, at the end for some concluding remarks. But uh, with that, I'd like to uh, defer to Rabbi Abe for the Javar. Uh, actually, Rabbi Annie is going to start us off. Oh, that's even better. Yes, I my eyes to <clears throat> the mountaintops and I ask where will my help come from? My help comes from Adonai, the maker of heaven and earth. Right? These are the words of Psalm 121, a psalm that we turn to in times of struggle, in times of crisis, in times of dismay and disorientation. But I've been thinking, I've actually been thinking all along throughout this time of pandemic about one of the later voices, uh, verses. Hine lo yanum velo yishan shomer Yisrael the guardian of Israel, the guardian of the Jewish people, lo yinum velo yishan, uh, the, what's the, the, the old timey translation says, the, the guardian of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. And I've been thinking about that as a way of understanding what it means to be a Kila Kedosha, what it means to be a congregation. Right? The, we are also called upon um, not any one of us, although I think for, um, I think I speak for all of the staff members when I say I think each of us have felt at times, right, that we're called on to go without slumber or sleep, um, but to go the extra mile and to deliver precisely at those moments where it's hardest, to be present in all kinds of ways. I mean, if I think back, um, you know, even just to last Rosh Hashanah, 
when I spoke about this idea of ministry of presence, when what we do for others is simply the act of being with them, being there for them, that is, I said then and I'll say again, right? That is the most sacred work. And something that I feel so immensely proud of um, our staff and the congregants at BZBI is that we've figured out how to be present when we have to be distant. Um, and some of you, um, we don't have a, a summer intensive this year, but some of you on this, uh, at this meeting have been in the summer intensive with me in past years, and you know that I, I love paradoxes and the way that paradoxes emerge as the, the defining axis of Hasidic thought. We've figured out how to be present and distant at the same time. Right, the container is empty. We're all in our respective homes. And there are more than 75 people together for this meeting. Um, and people have suffered losses. And we've found ways to sit Shiva in a park, to show up on Zoom, to share presence and be present in people's loss. Um, you know, my family welcomed a baby about a week and a half ago. And so people ring the doorbell and run away and there's a bag of food on the porch. Uh, and, I, and I'm just, I'm continually enthralled with this idea that, that what used to be a prank, right? The ding and dash, what used to be a, a childish prank has become proper social etiquette. But there we are, all the things we used to do in close proximity to one another. We've learned how to do it anyway when we can't have that kind of closeness. Right, we figured out how to have our Shabbat services on Zoom. And yes, Rabbi Annie and I spent a lot of time having very intricate halachic conversations that we then had a very detailed nuts and bolts conversation with the ritual committee about. Um, and yet again, it was conversations that she and I and various board members had with all kinds of members of the congregation that actually guided us into thinking about what kind of Zoom Shabbat service did we need? Because there were a lot of different ways it could have gone. And so in all of this, our, our clergy and our staff and our board and our congregants have been a team. We've been a community. And we've learned together and taught one another how to do BZBI in this upside down world. And I'm, and I'm here tonight so grateful to all of you. Um, and I'm, I'm like clicking through to see the different screens. So grateful to all of you who took the time to be a part of this meeting tonight uh, from your homes or your parents' homes or your vacation homes or all of the places that you might be, um, you know, with your loved ones, with your pets, by yourself. You're living this term, Kihila Kadosha, sacred community, that we use in Hebrew to describe a synagogue. But it's not just a Hebrew word for a synagogue, it's a mission. Um, and Rabbi Annie and I have devoted ourselves, dedicated our careers to that mission. Uh, but I assure you, we would have gotten not very far without everything that each of you individually and all of you collectively put in. Um, so I came here tonight to say thank you. Um, thank you to Rabbi Annie. Thank you to Rebecca Slavin Phillips and our tireless BZBI staff. 
uh, thank you to Nikki and the outgoing board members and the incoming board members. And uh, thank you to each and every one of our members uh, who are here on the call tonight, who are not here on the call tonight, who reached out to me today to ask if there was going to be a recording that they could watch later because they want to be a part of the meeting, but they're not available at this hour. Um, that's what makes BZBI the special, beautiful, sacred, spiritual home that we all know it to be. Thank you. Pastor Carr, thank you, Rabbi. Um, I, w I wanted to, uh, for those of you who know me, know that I'm typically a pretty lighthearted, upbeat, uh, and often silly kind of person. But I, I, I realized after a uh, hundred some days of, of being home, the first you know, 99 days, which were lovely to spend with my family, that um, I, I've been trying to wrap my head around what this first year is in this role has been like for me. And uh, it's been challenging, but very rewarding and wonderful. Uh, but within the last few months, as you know, we've, we've encountered some difficult times. And I think I, I've enjoyed this role even more as we go through these difficult times. We've had this, a virus, a boiling up of intolerance and a calling out of unequal treatment. And it's caused us to change our habits and our lives and our priorities. And the lesson that I learned today, actually from my um, clients in, in city government is that we need to be introspective. Uh, we need to recognize either the mistakes that, that we're making or that members of our community are making and admit them, own them and apologize for them and work diligently to ensure that they don't happen again. And I think, I know that our community is doing that. We're doing that individually. We're doing that with each other. Um, I am sure you read the e Kong today. If you haven't had a chance to pour through it, please do so. Rabbi Eddie is forming Takuna alum teams, including anti-racism reading group. There's a group that's exploring becoming part of power and other way ways to stand in coalition with diverse congregations in our city to work together um, for racial justice and economic dignity. Some of the other things that ways that our shul is supporting our community is Rabbi Max Nissen has, has shared resources with families for talking to their children about race, racism, protest, and all the while providing uh, family programming like Tat Shabbat for families with young children, new weekly Shabbat family services, a teen summer Zoom hangout, and Rosh Hadesh group for teen girls. So amidst all this turmoil, amidst all this, a lot of these big feelings and major issues that um, are bubbling to the surface. Our organization is, I'm proud to be a part of it, and I'm proud to be part of the, the need that our, our congregants feel this need to help and to want to be part of the solution, and I think that's amazing, and like I said, I think this is, I've enjoyed this role. I know you'll be shocked to hear this. I've enjoyed being in this role for a year, but mostly in the last few months because it shows how strong we are as a community and how we're able to go out of our ways to help not only the immediate BZBI community, but the rest of uh, the Philadelphia community and the rest of the country. So um, back to my, my lighthearted usual personality, um, but I wanted to, to recognize that this is a difficult time for everybody and um, that I'm proud to be part of this group. So I wanted to point out a few things and move along so that um, you're not here all night and you can go read the Econ and get to our 60th birthday parties that um, I think Doug is going to and some other people. But the Early Ed Education Committee um, has been working hard and Sarah Goldfuss, our Director of Early Education, is working hard to get our youngest members of our community uh, back to school on August 31st, which will be great. Lots of uh, measures in place in terms of security and lots of cleaning and new ways of getting our kids back into school. Our kitchen project. We had hoped that we would be able to start construction on the kitchen this summer, and summer is the best time to, to be able to do the construction. So obviously we've had to press pause on that plan to reinvigorate the kitchen in honor of Mr. Gregory, and the plan is that we'll be able to, to do that next summer. And I appreciate everyone's patience. Um, I know that we're excited to, to get moving 
and it's being a reinvigorated kitchen uh, this summer, this fall. Um, I would like to thank Harvey Frederick, our interim executive director for his, what I call a gap year before real retirement. He recently retired from Bechelom and spent the better half of this year um, with us updating our air conditioning, facilitating membership, onboarding new staff, securing grants to update our security, and generally keeping the lights on. So thank you very much, Harvey. We will miss you and we've appreciated your help. Um, and Harvey has, has been working side by side, virtually of course, um, and overlapping with our new executive director, Rebecca Slavin Phillips, to get her uh, onboarded during COVID, onboarded right after Passover. Um, Rebecca came in, she has amazing ideas and is focused and committed. I know a lot of you have met uh, Rebecca during, um, while enjoying coffee via Zoom. Please continue to do that. Uh, Rebecca is working tirelessly to help get the kids back to school and support our clergy and is, is an immensely valuable resource. So if you have not met, had the chance to meet her, please reach out to her to do so. Um, I wanna express my gratitude to the staff who continue to work through, um, even though our physical school is closed, Phyllis, Rebecca, Leslie, David, Brian, Joel, and all of our teachers, they haven't stopped working, um, even though we weren't necessarily in the building, they haven't stopped working to develop and present online programs, updating the directory membership so you all can reach out to each other and find each other, um, paying bills, disinfecting, disinfecting, and disinfecting, updating security, and generally keeping us connected to each other. So thank you. We could not do um, any of these programs and keep the, the show running uh, without them. Um, and lastly, from my perspective, we wanted to, I wanted to welcome Miriam DeVita to our community this month. On behalf of the congregation, we presented or will present the Krasner Freedmans with a basket of gifts from the sisterhood um, on behalf of the congregation and Shabbos dinner from the board and staff. We would all like to say mazel tov and I can't wait to meet this little, little one. So thank you. And with that, I'm gonna- Th thank you. I'm just, I'm, somebody unmuted me. So I'm going to say thank you to everybody. Um, the gifts arrived and got unpacked. Uh, so yes, it was, we were all really touched and looking forward to Shabbat dinner. And I'm um, so grateful to all of the love that's poured out from the community. Keep yourself unmuted because I'm going to pass it off to you to talk about high holidays. And then I'm going to let you introduce um, Rob and Greg for the report of the nominating committee, please. Uh, okay. Ooh, all right. Yeah. So much responsibility. <laughs> um, so I uh, am going to share with everyone uh, what I think uh, what I think will be uh, probably not surprising news. We are planning to hold High Holidays online this year. Um, it seems like even as things are starting to open up, um, I know there's talk about moving into a green phase, uh, there's a lot of conflicting considerations with that. So uh, the opening up to green phase brings with it the permission, if you will, to hold small religious services with up to 25 people and a letter from the Philadelphia Health Commissioner requesting that synagogues and churches refrain from holding religious services. Um, and part of what we're seeing from other parts of the country uh, is that as things reopen, rates are going up. And we have, uh, from the beginning, taken a cautious approach. We are continuing to take a cautious approach. Uh, and if we are not going to try to reopen for 25 people, we're certainly not gonna to try to reopen for 600. Um, where we're at right now at the moment, I'll say a couple of things about that. The first is uh, we have assembled a high holiday planning task force uh, representing a broad cross section of the congregation. And the task force will be hosting an open town hall meeting next Thursday, July 2nd at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Um, that's gonna be an opportunity for us to talk in a little bit more detail about high holiday plans, but really mostly for us to take questions from uh, the congregation about high holidays. 
Um, there's not going to be a lot of answers at the meeting. Uh, what we really want to hear are questions and ideas that people have on their minds so that as we spend the summer planning for the high holiday services, we can be planning services that are highly responsive to what our congregation has actually said they would like to get out of services. Um, we know some things already just from the conversations that we've had around Shabbat services. Uh, we know that BZBI likes a feeling of interactivity and relationing relationships in their services. It's why we've been using Zoom as our platform for Shabbatot. Um, and we are planning for our membership to use Zoom for the high holidays as well. Uh, you know, one of the open questions is whether there will also be a one-way non-interactive stream that might be available beyond our membership. But for our active membership, uh, we are going to be using Zoom. That will mean that people will be able to take Aliyot, that we'll be able to give people English readings and other prayers to recite in the way that we have. And our, you know, what we've already committed to, um, Rabbi Annie and I, the Ritual Committee and the High Holiday Task Force, is to craft an online High Holiday experience that will be as maximally interactive as the technology and the halacha allows for. Um, I also just assume that I have not thought of all of the questions that there are to think of. So I really hope that you will all uh, join us next Thursday for this uh, town hall meeting, bring your questions and your ideas. Uh, and if you know people who are not present tonight, but who you think are creative people with interesting ideas to encourage them also to take part in that town hall meeting. Um, the other piece of our High Holiday puzzle is thinking about ways in which we can have uh, safe in-person interactions. Um, and I don't wanna to say too much about that tonight because we're still very much in the visioning and dreaming stages. Um, and there's a lot to work out before we get there. But what we're looking for is over the course of the Aseret Yemei Tshuva or possibly over the course of the entire season, the month of Elul leading up to Rosh Hashanah through Yom Kippur, to think about how we have, uh, how we use a hybrid experience of both um, limited, safely socially distanced in-person connections and online learning and services to create the richest possible high holiday experience for BZBI. Um, and again, I'm gonna ask if you have questions or ideas about any of this, uh, bring them next Thursday where we're gonna be taking notes and gathering and putting all of this into the hopper to be able to come back at the end of the summer for another uh, town hall meeting led by our High Holiday Task Force that where we'll be able to say, here's the plan, everybody. Um, and now it is, uh, oh, I guess the one last thing to mention, because this is like a thing that I'm sure people are going to be wondering about. Um, our staff has figured out how we will be able to lend or sell Mahzarim to uh, anybody who's looking for them. So if you're wondering, like, how am I going to have a mafzer for the high holidays? We've got you covered. Details will be coming out later, but you will have access to everything that you need to make the most of this online high holiday experience. Um, and now it is with great excitement that I turn things over to our governance chair, Rob Byron, and our immediate pre past president, Greg Cantor who are the co-chairs of BZBI's nominating committee uh, for them to present the nominations to BZBI's board. Take it away, guys. Thank you, Rabbi Abe. BZBI is governed by a board of directors, a board of trustees. All five officers in any open non-officer board positions are selected by a nominating committee, presented to the board, and elected by you at the annual meeting. Rob Byron, the co-chair of the nominating committee, will announce this year's slate of nominees. Before he does that, I'd like to thank the members of the nominating committee for the work they did in helping us get to where we are. Besides Rob and myself, we have Arlene Fickler to thank, Stu Goodman, Bob Mosenkis, Joshua Morawski, and Laurie Turner. Take it away, Rob. Thanks, Greg. Hi, everyone. 
great to virtually see all of you to participate in this annual meeting together. It's a very important function for our synagogue, for our congregation, for our community um, to meet. And uh, I'm glad we're able to make this happen um, in these times. Um, a bit of uh, business to note at the outset of this portion, uh, the bylaws require that in order uh, to conduct official business at the annual meeting, um, we must have at least 50, that's five zero, 50 members of the congregation in good standing and attendance. Um, I believe the uh, counter has participants currently at a number higher than 50. We are at 83, if you're seeing what I'm seeing at home. Uh, and uh, so um, I would note also that our bylaws uh, uh, in their current state do reflect that this type of electronic attendance counts toward um, a quorum uh, for uh, our annual meeting. And um, the board made certain that that would be the case. Um, and so we are in good standing to proceed. Uh, I would like to present the slate of candidates. Um, I'll note at the outset that BCBI has a 20 member board. For those of you who may not be as familiar with the board makeup as those of us who are on the board, I'll give a brief description for your edification and interest. Uh, the 20 members uh, break down as follows. There are five officers, each officer uh, serves for one year term. So that means that each of the five officer positions are up for election each year. And the other 15 trustees uh, generally uh, chair a specific committees. Um, and there are, uh, but there are also two at large uh, members um, who are uh, among those 15. So um, when I recite uh, the names of the candidates who are on the slate um, as put forth by the nominating committee and presented to the board and now, uh, and also distributed to the congregation, I will be sure to state the position for which each candidate is nominated uh, along with the term for their position. Um, but uh, I also, before I proceed, I want to extend uh, many thanks to um, Phyllis Kramer and David Haas in the BZBI office for all of their hard work. Uh, from your points of view, it just comes to you as a clean slate, either in the mail or by email, but I can guarantee you behind the scenes, <laughs> it is a lot of work to make this happen successfully. Um, and I had the pleasure uh, to work with Phyllis for several years now on this, and now the first time with David. And I can tell you BZBI is very fortunate to have both of them uh, working for us. So Phyllis, David, thank you both so much for all of your work. Very much appreciate it. Uh, let me proceed with the uh, names of candidates on the slate, and then and we can um, move forward uh, to the online voting. Um, so, oh, thank you, David. You can all read along with me. Officers nominated for a one-year term ending June 30th, 2022. President, Nicole Morris. Vice Presidents, Carl Levinson, Susan Zeelander. Treasurer, Sarah Shaman. Secretary, Terry Hershorn. Trustees nominated for three-year terms uh, ending June 30th, 2023. Jeremy Bannett at large, Gary Bramnick at large, Bonnie Goldberg, marketing, Rosalie Kurz, Tikkun Olam, Ivy Weingroom, adult programming. Trustee nominated for a two-year term ending June 30th, 2022. Dina Cobell, governance. Trustees nominated for one-year terms ending June 30th, 2021. Ann Albert, school. Suzanne Lipke, development. And I will also um, 
state the incumbent trustees who are in the midst of their terms, um, just to complete the record. Um, incumbent trustees serving year two of, of a three-year term ending June 30th, 2022. Uh, Eileen Dwell, community. Ariel Kirstein, early childhood. Larry Kessler, ritual. Michael Radbill, building. And then incumbent trustees serving year three of the three-year term ending June 30th, 2021. Brian Boucher, Finance, Sharon Grice, Membership, Matthew Whitehorn, Human Resources. And with that, uh, let me turn it over to Greg for the rest of the announcement there. Thank you, Rob. We have four board members who are stepping down. Rob Byron, Nancy Coleman, Sabrina Ruben Erdely, and Ben Silverman. I thank all four of you on behalf of BCBI, and I thank you all uh, on behalf of myself. I've watched you uh, make valuable and unique contributions to BCBI's management. And one trait that all of you have that I admire the most is that each of you stood up and spoke out when you heard something that didn't sound right, even if you were the solitary voice in the room. I think that is admirable, and thank you all. Thank you, Greg. Um, and with that, we can proceed, uh, unless there are any questions coming through or any questions submitted in advance, um, we can proceed with, uh, with, uh, with the vote. And I believe, David, you have that uh, technology at your disposal. There we go. Technology is a wonderful thing, especially when it works. Okay, and the results of the election are to approve the slate of candidates. Uh, thank you everyone for participating. Um, the slate has been approved and um, congratulations to the uh, election of the 2020-2021 BZBI board. Um, good luck everyone, mazel tov. Awesome. Thank you, Greg and Rob. I, I can't tell you how much, um, how, how grateful I am to you. I know it's a lot of hard work. I also appreciate and want to recognize the members of the committee because um, it takes a lot of work and it's not an easy job and making calls and maybe being rejected, but it's also really rewarding and I'm very, very pleased about the new board. So thank you again to, to Arlene, to Rob, to Greg, Stuart, Bob, Josh, and Lori. Thank you. And to the, my board members who are leaving, I thank you as well. And I'll miss you. And thank you very much for your service. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Gary Bramnick to update us on development. Hi, everyone. Um, hold on. I am just uh, about sharing my screen. David, um, I only am, seem to be able to share a whiteboard, not able to share my PowerPoint. Is there a setting that needs to be fixed? Can you act it out, Gary? <laughs> I could just, I'll give the numbers, it's fine. I had pretty slides, but we'll put them up anywhere. Uh, and, uh, we'll put them up online. Um, so, <clears throat> We had a, I wanted to give an update, but also give some context to our annual giving. Um, the report that I'm giving is specifically about annual giving. It does not include all of the other donations that have come in and from in 
regards to some of the other funds like memorial funds, floral, kiddish fund, et cetera. So strictly speaking with the annual report, uh, with the annual report, with annual giving, is that um, in, historically, um, in 2017, 2018, we had a budget projection of $275,000 uh, of annual giving. 2018, 2019, we modified that because it was a, a very extreme number um, and it, we moved it to $245,000. And this year's goal was $230,000. Ah, wait a minute, there we go. Look at that. Can you now see that slide? Uh, oh, but right, you can't all uh, respond. So, where we ended up is in 2017, 2018, we generated $221,000, 224 plus in 1819. And this year we exceeded at 246, 390. And I'll get to that number in a minute. But just some other facts that I think are important to know. It was 80% of goal, then we moved to 92% of goal, and we've gone to 107% over goal, which is really amazing. So thank you all. We had 237 donors, 236, and we pushed up to 241. And we averaged about a 55% participation rate. One thing that I did want to say is that this number that you're seeing here, this 246, 390, really is a combination of two numbers. It is a number of $239,590, and actually 20 cents, um, of, annual, of annual giving cash in hand in addition to about $6,800 that is not yet in hand, but has been pledged. And we still hope to receive those uh, commitments uh, before the end of the fiscal year. Um, <clears throat> there is still time. <laughs> the year is not over. We still have a few more days. Um, if you have not made a contribution to the annual giving, um, please do. I know we have achieved the goal that we set this year but please understand this, that that doesn't mean we're done. We, we don't say, okay, we've, we've reached the goal that we projected and now we can just sit back and wait. We all know that these past months have been incredibly trying for so many organizations, the synagogue notwithstanding. Um, and so anything that everybody can do to help continue supporting the, the you know, BZBI community is vitally important. So. If there are things that you want to do, if you are looking to do a special gift in honor of someone, please reach out to myself, to anyone on the board, to Suzanne uh, in the coming year. Um, but there's ways to, to create an honor for someone and there's lots of opportunities. Um, so please uh, know that this synagogue and this community is so important to all of us who are here. You guys are all joining in for a meeting, um, you know, uh, for our annual meeting. So. The synagogue means something to everybody, and so everybody has to play a part in that. And as I've said multiple times in letters and from the BIMA, everybody has a part to play and everybody's part is significant. Um, small gifts are equally welcome and valuable and important as larger gifts. And gifts of time, gifts of energy um, are, are equally valuable. So we thank you and I wanna thank everybody for all the help this year for the board over the last three years, helping to make calls and, and reach out to our community to make sure that we keep the funds coming in. Because as we've said before, tuition and, and, and um, our membership fees really only cover a little over 60% of our annual operating budget. And we really need to do the fundraising to help bridge that gap. So thank you all and uh, keep giving. There's still time. Thank you, Gary. I appreciate it. Uh, Brian, are you ready to present the um, the budget committee report? I am. Uh, good evening, everyone. I know it's getting to be a long meeting, and unfortunately, I have a long presentation. But there's nothing that gets the adrenaline pumping quite like talking about synagogue finances, so it should be an exciting 10 minutes. Okay, what my agenda is going to be is first of all, I'm gonna talk about the budget for next year. So you can see where all the money goes and where all the money comes from. And then I'll talk about our actual performance this year. So let's build the budget. So if we're gonna have a synagogue next year, 
Got to start with the clergy. So we spend about $366,000 on the clergy. So that's Rabbi Abe, Rabbi Annie, Rabbi Stone. Not just salaries, but also payroll taxes, health insurance, rabbinical assembly dues, book fee, uh, all that stuff goes into the clergy expense. Then if you're going to run a synagogue, you need an administrative staff. So this is uh, our executive director, Rebecca Slavin Phillips. It's Phyllis, Leslie, David, Rebecca Krasner. And then again, all of the healthcare, payroll taxes, and all the other costs. In addition, we spend about $50,000 in insurance. That is not health insurance. That's property casualty, liability, cyber insurance, workers' comp. And then about 80,000 in other admin. So that would be office supplies, bank fees, payroll service fees, benefit service fees, shill cloud, a bunch of small things that add up. Then we bring in the custodians. So Brian and Joel, plus another part-time person that we bring in. So we budget about 114,000 for that, again, including health insurance and taxes. Security is about $63,000. Now this is actually adjusted down for the fact that we're not gonna have security in July and half of August. The security will start again uh, when the teachers come back mid-August. For a full year, it's about $69,000. And just to give you some perspective, the maintenance and security fee that we ask you to give, we only get about $55,000. So that doesn't cover all of the security needs that we have. And then finally, we have maintenance and utilities of 98,000, um, which is all the building supplies, utilities, and so forth. So that gets us to $1.1 million just to run the bare bones part of BCBI. And so if we thought about how much that would cost for each member, so I'm gonna say there's about 600 individual members. And what I'm doing here is I'm considering a household membership as two people, uh, you know, cause it's always hard to get the kids to kick in their 500 bucks towards the synagogue. So if you, you think a household is two people, individuals is one, we have about 600 members. And so it would take $1,800 a member to cover just these expenses. Now dues, which we didn't raise for this year, are basically $1,500 a member, $1,500 for individuals, $3,000 for households. So we're not going to collect all we need. And in fact, what we'll do is we make the trade-off of wanting more members than, than fewer. And so if there are people that have financial difficulties, they can't pay the full membership amount, we'll work something out. And so we end up collecting about $636,000 or about $1,000 per member on average doesn't come close to the million. So here's where Gary comes in and Suzanne next year in contributions. Now my number is a lot bigger than Gary's because I also have tributes and memorials in here, which adds about 30,000 to the goal of 235 for next year. And so those that can give, we get about uh, 1,152 on average, which still puts us $200,000 short of paying for everything we need to run the synagogue. And so this is where early childhood helps us. So ECE is early childhood education, the preschool and the play school. We budgeted about 900,000 in tuition and about 600,000 in expense, which means we make about $300,000. And that's with the tuition that's competitively benchmarked with other schools in the area. And of course, what we pay our teachers is competitively benchmarked as well. It just turns out it's a profitable business because once you get enough kids in the classroom to cover the teachers, then each additional kid, you get extra contribution and our rooms have been pretty full. Plus, the, the, the tuition helps cover the security, the extra custodians, the extra admin staff time that you need to run the school. And so having the school gets us ahead. So now we're ahead by about $100,000. Uh, early childhood also helps us subsidize Nezner Hebrew School. So we bring in about 145,000 in tuition, that's what we're budgeting for next year, about 197,000 in expense for a subsidy of about 52,000. And this is an improvement over where it was this year. And Rabbi Max has been working on bringing this number down. But if you look across all synagogues, they all subsidize their Hebrew schools. It's sort of the opposite situation of early childhood where you don't have the enrollments, the enrollments are not as high. Um, so it's something that we currently subsidize. Still ahead of the game though, by about 40,000, our income versus our expenses. So then we bring in ritual and programming. So this would include holidays, kiddish, book of remembrance, floral fund, 
all of the adult education programs, the Friday night Shabbat dinners, Eliana Light, basically everything that makes the econ too long to read in one sitting. That's all in ritual and programming. And, and it by and large pays for itself. So we bring in 122,000 and we pay out in expenses 119. Although I should add that one of the biggest contributors is Rabbi Stone and actually his expenses down here in clergy. So if I moved Rabbi Stone up here, we actually lose a little bit probably on ritual and programming. And then finally, we have some investing income from our investments. We pay some money for a mortgage. And so what we're budgeting for next year is a surplus of about $7,900. Now, we worked hard to really try to control the expenses because we know there's a lot of uncertainty. And I would be surprised if we end up with a surplus for next year. Our thought was, let's be conservative. Let's budget a surplus. And it gives us some cushion if we have some drop in early childhood enrollments in the fall or if we have to close for a couple months because there's a second wave of the pandemic. And it gives us a little cushion if we lose some membership because more of our members are having financial difficulties. So that's very uncertain at this point, but we're going to revisit this in September once we have much, much, more, much more certainty around the school and the membership. Um, and so I got a question that came through of the $300,000 $300, overage, is there any portion attributed to overhead. So I assume this is for the tuition. Um, yeah, so we haven't tried to, to allocate this out, but, but basically that tuition is trying to cover maintenance, security, custodians, you know, the insurance goes, a lot of it goes to the school, admin staff. Um, you know, if, if I had less, less work in my full-time job, maybe I would do a full activity-based costing system and we could see how it prices out. I guess I'll put that on the to-do list. Um, I don't see any other questions on the budget. If you have them, feel free to chat them or uh, openly or chat them privately to David and he'll interrupt. But what I'm going to do now is go on to what happened during this year. And to talk about what happened during this year, first I have to go back to last year. So this is the year ended 2018, 2019, so last June. This top orange line was our budget for income for the year, so this is our income. The line that's going up here is our actual income accumulated over every month. So what happens during the year is a lot of our income comes in in July, August, September, because that's when we get the school tuitions, membership renewals, high holiday guest tickets, and we start to kick off annual giving. Then our income sort of flattens out, and then it spikes up a little bit at the end of the year as we get early childhood camp. And so in 2018, 2019, our income finished ahead of budget. So for 2020, we had budgeted a higher level of income based on that. And then if we look at the 2020 actual, we see the same pattern. Now we fell a little bit behind last year, mainly because the holidays were later in 2020 than they were 2019, which affects, of course, all the last minute renewals. But then we caught up and by February, we're cruising way ahead of last year. Now I stopped in February because, because of course on, I think it was March 13th, we had to close the synagogue, close the school to try to flatten the curve for the COVID pandemic. And unfortunately that flattened the curve in more ways than one. As our income flattened out, um, because what we ended up doing is since we closed early childhood, we offered refunds for the remaining period. Um, we asked people if they were willing to donate, and a few parents were, a were generously able to donate, but most parents needed to credit that towards next year's tuition or take a refund. And then we did not hold early childhood camp this year, so we did not, uh, we gave back all the tuition we had collected for that. So that was our income story. Now let's look at the expense side. So the blue line is 2018-2019. The red line is this year, 2019-2020. And so expenses are fairly linear throughout the year. About 70% of the, our expenses are payroll and we pay people evenly across 12 months. And as you can see for the red line, there is no curve flattening in terms of what happens after we close. 
And that's because the board made the decision for no layoffs. We kept on all the staff, all the custodians, all the teachers, didn't cut salary, kept paying them. And so that's why the expenses kept moving like they did. And so it looks like we're crazy because if I put together 2020, the income and the expense, our income in green is flattening off, our expense keeps going up. And as at the end of May, we're at a loss position. But we were able to do this because of two government programs. So we applied for an EIDL grant, that's the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Grant, which is $10,000 that we got from the Small Business Administration, which we just get to keep. And then the big one is the one you've been hearing in the news, the Paycheck Protection Program or PPP loan. We received $239,600. Now it's a loan with a 1% interest rate, but if you spend that money on forgivable expenses, which would include payroll, health benefits, utilities, interest on a mortgage, every dollar you spend to that is gonna be forgiven by the government. Uh, as long as you don't lay off or cut staff, which is what we didn't do. So we're going to be able to keep almost all of this PPP loan. And so if I bring this in, that's going to pop us up to break even or even a little bit of a little bit ahead for the year. So the, so the great news is that we weathered this really well by taking advantage of these government programs which allowed us to keep everyone on board, keep offering all the things that we could do. So we're in a great position heading into next year. So we were on pace to have a great year. And I know the synagogue had some financial problems, you know, three, four, five years ago, but, but things were really looking good the last year and eight months until the pandemic hit. But with these government programs, we were able to weather it nicely. And we're in a pretty good position heading into next year. The, the uncertainty though is it depends on how early childhood school can open in the fall and stay open and our ability to retain our membership. So please consider retaining, uh, renewing your membership because it will help us you know, keep going through the next year. Uh, and then as I said in September, we're going to revisit everything when we have more certainty around the membership and the schools. So that is the end of my presentation. I'll let you all look at each other again and see if there are any other questions. Uh, Brian, there was uh, just one question that came in. Uh -huh. um, just a clarification on who falls into the category of clergy. It's Rabbi Stone, Rabbi Friedman, and Rabbi Lewis. Yes. Great, thank you. Rabbi Max is part of the Nesner Hebrew School budget. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for your humorous presentation. Um, but I, wasn't also, meant, I wasn't meant to be humorous. Sure, sure. I mean, it wasn't. I wasn't laughing at you, ever. Um, and thank you for your creativity, not, uh, not just in presenting the reports and making them uh, easy to understand and highlighting uh, the significant points, but your help throughout the year in making sure that we reach these points, that we get the grants that we get the loans, that the money is going where it needs to, to go, and that we're funding programs that we need to fund in a creative way, and that we are taking a creative spin on the budget by reevaluating it in the next couple months because we know that the economy is never static, um, nor are our, our, our funds. So I really appreciate um, your help. It has been invaluable this year. So thank you very much. Um, Sorry, I was just checking the chat for any, um, any questions. With that, my concluding remarks will be brief. I want to thank everybody for attending and staying throughout. I noticed that our participants numbers did not drop. So thank you very much, even though part of it may have been dry. Not your presentation, Brian. Um, thank you very much. Uh, if there are questions, now's the time to ask them. If not, um, this isn't your only opportunity to ask them. It's only your only opportunity to ask them via Zoom, but we are ha here to help you answer questions about... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Jokes in the chat. Thank you. Um, we're here to answer your questions and to help. If you need support uh, at home, um, please let us know. We'll be happy to give you a call. 
um, Rebecca Krasner, Eileen Dwell, Sharon Grice have done an amazing job along with our office staff in pairing people up so that they get the support, maybe just check-ins and um, anything else that you might need, just let us know. I look forward to seeing you at um, Shabbat services and, um, and hopefully, and again, if you need anything from any of the board members, give us a call. Our, we are updating our, um, we'll update the BZBI website with the photos of the new board members and all the board members, as well as our bio. So check that out in a few days. Thank you for, uh, to David for um, planning that. And um, I'll just check in one last time. David, are there, are there any questions? Um, yes, there, there were two questions that came in while you were talking. One is um, a, a clarification a question. Were there any savings um, that came out of the unfortunate need to close the building and cancel um, some of our programming? Um, so that may, may be a question for Brian. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, there were definitely savings. So we stopped paying security once the building closed. And so we saved the security over that period. Obviously, uh, things like supplies went down. Um, I haven't totaled it all up because um, it's been hard enough to, to get handled and everything else. But we did have some nice savings this budget year, which helped us meet our goal for the year. And there, there was one other question that came in uh, from somebody who is planning to join uh, my roof uh, at 8.30 uh, tonight. And it is not on the same link. All of our... Our religious services use the same meeting ID, but um, but uh, our events use different IDs. So David, just to clarify, Mariv tonight will be on the regular Mariv meeting ID. Yes. And, and as long as I have the floor, I'll put in a, a little plug that the event page on the website um, and our new uh, virtual BCBI uh, page have the have the registration links for next week's high holidays town hall wonderful thank you everybody i really appreciate you being here take care thank you nikki yes sir thank you so much thank you nikki